Welcome back to the 31st part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework and in this one I'm going to show you what a namespace is in Django. So you can see if we go to the uh, main URLs file, so not the one that's inside the accounts app but rather the one in the tutorial folder, we click on URLs and you can see here that we, we have this URL that's defined and it's forward slash account forward slash and then it includes all the URLs for that particular app, so all the ones defined in that app's urls.py file. But with a namespace, we can we can optionally say when we include that urls file, uh, namespace is equal to, and then we can define whatever we want that namespace to be. Now, for my sort of projects that I work on, I tend to use the convention that the namespace is the same as the name of the app. Although it doesn't have to be, and you could technically choose what, whatever name you want for this namespace. But I'm going to call it accounts, just because it's very easy to remember, just because the name of the app is the name of the, names, the namespace. So, some instances, maybe you can't do that for whatever reason, but for the most part, I've always found that to work pretty well. So, with the, with the namespace accounts, we can go over to the browser and see that the development server's refreshed, so it still works. Uh, just like that with the namespace accounts, but what happens if we try to say click on uh, a profile? The reason for this error is it's actually coming from our middleware So it didn't really matter what URL we went to here because any time that we're trying to load a view Our middleware is going to be loaded just before that uh, So we could have gone to any URL and still got the same error now the error occurs here where we use the reverse and this is something I sort of talked about in the last video where we had this uh, reverse and then we sort of removed that need for hard coding the URLs. But the reason that this doesn't work now is because we've defined that namespace, we have to do something slightly different here when we're referring to that URL. And what we want to say is this is the accounts app that we want to look in for that name logout. And then we're going to use the URL within the accounts app called logout. Now, the reason that this is really good is if you have multiple apps, you can actually use in your individual apps urls.py files the same name more than once. So if you had multiple urls, or sorry, multiple Django apps that you wanted to use the same name for, you could say log in, log out, and register. If you wanted to use those names in other apps, for example, maybe they aren't the best names to sort of reuse, but in general, if you if you wanted to say URL1 or something, which is a terrible name, but if you want to use that in multiple apps, then you could do that, and then you could refer to each app specifically using the namespace, which is really, really nice, because it allows you to distinguish wh whichever app that that particular name for the URL is sort of corresponding to, if you have multiple apps. So it's, it's a way of being much more explicit with the U URLs that you're referring to, and avoiding sort of collisions with names because if you have uh, two Django apps and they both have a URL named logout, which you know in a large Django project it's not that uncommon to see you know someone else has written a Django app and you're writing another Django app and you're you're trying to come up with a name for your URL that hasn't been taken already. Well, a namespace is a good way of sort of avoiding that sort of URL collision which you really don't want and it's, good, it's just going to cause problems uh, either with it causing errors or just URLs going to the wrong place in general. So I think a, a namespace is just a very good convention to be able to use and it's a good way of distinguishing the URLs that you're trying to refer to. So I'm going to go back over to that page I tried to load before and I'll refresh it. So now we've got another error because we had another URL and this is for the view profile URL. So this is being called in one of the templates. I think it's the profile.html template. So it was, sorry, it was the link to the profile page. So it was the link that we have on the base template. So we're using URL view, view profile here. And again, we're just going to need to adapt the template to use that new namespace so that we're being explicit with which app that, that URL is going to be looked for in. So now, as you can see, that works. Uh, and the reason for that is just because we've been nice and explicit about the namespace that we're using. So now that I've done that, I can finally go ahead and update all the other URLs.
Okay, so at this point I've finished changing over all the URLs in the uh, templates and also in the views file uh, for the accounts app. So they're all using that, either the Django reverse function or the notation, the syntax in the templates uh, that I talked about in the last couple of videos. So with the exception of the reset password form, everything else is now working. So I'm going to show you what's broken uh, with respect to that. So the reset, the password reset done uh, button is actually broken, and you can see that by uh, if we could, if we just go to the home page, and we can click on all the other links. So the profile page still works, the edit works, the change password works, but if we click on reset password, it doesn't work. And all I've done is changed the URLs from being statically sort of hard coded in the templates and in the views, and now this doesn't work. And the reason for that is by default. The, the actual view that we're using for the password reset is the, the built-in Django one and by default it's going to use the reverse for password reset none. Now this was okay until we started using that namespace but because we're using a namespace we want to put accounts colon in front of this password reset done. So to get around that we can actually pass it in as a parameter uh, called post reset redirect. So that's what we're going to do in the dictionary into our urls.py. So we've already got a dictionary here that we're passing in to the password reset view, which is the, so the source code for which I just showed you. And in this dictionary, I'm going to break this up slightly so it's easier to see because these URLs can get quite long sometimes with the dictionaries in and stuff like that. So here I'm just going to define uh, what's called post reset redirect. Now this is a parameter which the view takes and what I need to pass in here is a string which is the one that will go into the, inside that reverse function or inside that template. So in here I can pass now accounts and then password reset done. And now hopefully that should resolve the URL uh, correctly so it should pass it through to the view more effectively. So refresh the development server, now refresh that, that now works. So you can see it works just the same as the other one. And I'll just double check, so by entering, say, an email to reset my password. And now I've just noticed this is sort of an error as well, that this reset password needs to be done when a user's not logged in. Because if they, if they reset the password whilst they're logged in, then there's still no way of resetting the password if they're not logged in, which is the whole point of being able to reset your password. So I need to change that, and I'm going to do that in the next video. And if we try and reset our password, so when we submit that form for our reset password, uh, not only is that form in the wrong place, you know, so that we can view it when we're authenticated rather than when we're not authenticated, but it also doesn't work right now, so I'm going to fix both of those things in the next video.